Hey guys and welcome to this first proper video on my brand new YouTube channel. This is the uh, this video is going to be about my project, the Kang Tao from the upcoming video game Cyberpunk 2077. This is a functional nerf gun, so um, this video is going to be about just a basic overview of the th of just the CAD portion of it. I've already 3D printed most of it out. I'm just going to show you here basically how it works and stuff. So. Um, any comments or questions just leave them in the comment section below or whatever um, so let's get right to it all right so this is a um, this is a example piece uh, so this is like it goes around the magazine just for aesthetics reasons just so the magazine looks like a Kang Tao magazine not the uh, standard nerf, nerf gun magazine so this is like a cover that goes around the magazine the mag sort of slides into this thing uh, so once I've done modeling that up, what I did was this cool little trick where I made it into multiple parts. So down here I added an extension piece and then I split it. So this piece is going to be the next part of the uh, Nerf gun uh, mag shell thing. And then what I do is I drew like a sketch as you can see there to make the cool shape. And then I save that as a second part, as a new part. Then onto the third part what I did is I added this is just so like instead of creating a new part every time I reuse an existing part and then I save it as a new file um, that way it saves a lot of time and I can easily see where I'm up to so this weird zigzag line through the middle there that'll be very that'll be annoying to have to redraw that again for the next part um, so what I did was I copied the part saved it as a new file and then I kept on drawing onto it on, like adding onto it so now I've got the bottom part that's below that top part and then I added chamfer underneath chamfer again um, keep in mind uh, 3D printing so this chamfer is instead of being 45 degrees I made it 60 degrees uh, 60 degrees makes it easier in a 3D printer uh, keeping in mind the 3D printing process um, as you're modeling things up uh, this way I'm planning on putting this surface down here onto the print bed and it's just going to print straight up so we'll, we'll see how that goes so that way there's no support material needed because support material is a real pain in the ass to have the model up and I do not use automatic generated support material because that's even more of a pain to remove adding fillets or fillets whatever you call them uh, just make it look nice to, suit, to match the other parts uh, adding more detail here on the side so um, that right there is just extra detail on one side there just aesthetic stuff uh, adding chamfers to all those four things and then finally mirroring that on the other side so we have come from a rectangular prism all the way down to I think uh, this piece and then save as a new part and we create the second piece which goes down to I believe uh, not that far uh, where is it uh, the second piece goes down to there, so that's the second piece, I save that and I print that out, I print that out upside down so that that hits the bed. Then to make the third piece is basically um, like that and that basically goes... So to put this all into perspective, I will now put this piece, what you see here, into the assembly and assemble it onto the rest of the, um, the gun. So here is the gun sort of thing, or the magazine, whatever, I'll show you the rest later uh, as a sneak peek. Um, but here. What you can see is the magazine with all the little nerf darts inside uh, and this is the cover, the first piece I was talking about. Uh, this black piece was another piece I haven't shown you but um, this is another piece I designed as well. Um, and this is the second piece I just showed you, this black piece down here. So now, and each piece is a different piece because I saved them all as a new file as I, as I went along. So now if I go and add this piece, the final third piece, the bottom piece I showed you just previously. Um, so if I add that now, I'm just going to go and I like to constrain the plane in the center uh, so that there can be constrained to, uh, let's say, the center there and switch it around the other way, apply, and again, uh, center it in the other direction. And then finally, because this is still moving like this, uh, just, you know, just click that stuff on there and then boom, done. So that's the bottom piece assembled onto the rest of the pieces. So now, the benefit of doing this, if you're wondering, instead of just doing one piece and then painting it, because painting it's a real pain, because then I've got to mask it, and I don't like masking before I paint, 
because I just I just don't like that. Okay, I just don't like just don't like masking. So uh, what I like to do is basically um, print as different uh, parts. Uh, for each color has got a different has got a different parts. So this black piece is its own piece. This is another color, so its own piece. This black piece is another piece. This different color again on the bottom is another piece. That way, when I spray paint them all, they are all like you know um, easy to spray paint. I don't have to mask them, etc. I can even print them as a correct color PLA if I had it, but I don't have black PLA at the moment. But I do have black paint laying around, so I'm just going to print out whatever PLA I've got laying around. Uh, 3D filament. If you know what don't know what PLA is, it's just normal uh, 3d printer filament so off camera i just made a few adjustments and now the rear part is all lined up nicely um, so now this is pretty much finished the um, bottom piece now if you're wondering uh, how am i going to mount all this together on the real thing like on the physical pieces after i 3d print them after i paint them i'm basically going to glue them all together now everything else is fastened with screws basically but this piece down here is designed to just be one piece stuck together forever so I'm just going to glue that stuff and also it's going to be stuck to the magazine itself I'm going to put like double sided sticky tape or something like that on the bottom of the magazine stick it in the bottom there and they're going to stay together as one piece like this basically and then stick it in there and I'm going to have two magazines which means I need to print two of these bits um, one for each magazine and then that basically slides up into there and then boom we have this awesome Kang Teo um, as a almost completed this is about 95% completed. There's a few little bits for aesthetics I'm going to add onto it. So if you look at the, um, let's do a half section view so you can uh, see what's inside. So let's move this inside here and cut, slice this thing in half. Uh, right about there, let's say. So, okay, so this is basically how it works. Um, so you got little nerf darts, that go, they go up. The top one doesn't quite go in like that, it stays about there. And then what happens is that this little, so you pull the little trigger down here. Well, first of all, you pull like another trigger, which I didn't actually draw in. I added it on the real gun, but there's this tiny little trigger down here. And you pull and hold that, and then the uh, flywheels, they spin up. You know, they spin really fast. I can make it, there you go, I can spin it the other way. <laughs> they spin up really fast. There's brushless motor flywheels, and those flywheels are 3D printed as well. Pretty much every single piece in here is 3D printed, except for the electronics, of course. And the magazine was Nerf, and the darts and Nerf. Everything else is 3D printed, including the trigger. So then you pull, then you pull this trigger right here. That trigger activates the micro switch. The micro switch um, lets the signal, the signal from the Arduino here, uh, go through to the solenoid, which I have up here, the blue highlighted thing. So then, when that solenoid uh, activates, uh, it then pushes that shaft forwards and back and forwards and back and forwards back. And every time it does so, it pushes it forwards and it pushes the nerf dart into the uh, flywheels, as you can see here. And the flywheels then grip it, and then the dart goes flying, uh, flying straight out of the freaking barrel like that. Okay, it's pretty, pretty little genius little setup, and it does work. I already built it. Um, I'm just uploading these YouTube videos uh, after I made it all work already. So this is guaranteed to work because I already made it work. So um, yeah. Now this, what's interesting is that um, might be getting carried away now, but this shaft, this um, extension thing here, um, the it's a lot easier to put the solenoid here, right up, right just behind the uh, magazine, but. Um, right up against the magazine but then I won't have this awesome looking see-through window here as you can see if you look on this side I won't have this uh, window in the middle here we can just see straight through because the Kang Tao in the video game in Cyberpunk 2077 has got that window there and I needed to, to simulate that somehow aesthetically so I had to move the solenoid back to over here which actually helps with the weight distribution uh, front to rear it puts more weight towards the back which is nice uh, makes it feel more balanced I guess and then I put an extension shaft here, a little extension piston that goes back and forth. Um, and that piston was sort of sagging a little bit before, but I simply fixed that with this um, little metal pin here. So a little metal pin I found laying around. I got some radio control cars. I, I just took a metal pin out of that. Use any sort of metal pin and then uh, stick that in there. 
and then this shaft actually has a slot that goes over the pin and the pin keeps it nice and straight basically and it also prevents it from rotating around because you want the uh, shaft to always be upright uh, that's what she said um, <laughs> and then this surface right here um, uh, let me see this surface right here um, hits the back of the dart right there and basically pushes it forward. Now what's interesting is that well yeah, um, anyways, never mind. But um, that is basically an overview of how it basically works. So uh, this has been a bit of a long video. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video but before you go leave a comment below if you've got any questions and be sure to subscribe to see updates of this project and any other future projects I'll stick on this YouTube channel. Um, next video is going to be about the 3D printing process of uh, getting these parts ready for 3D printing because you can't just print this part here just like that. You can't just print uh, most parts as they are. You need to add support material. So I'm going to show you that in the next video, how to make custom support material manually, why auto generator supports basically suck. And I'm also going to show you maybe a bit of 3D printing in the next video or the video after that. If you've got any uh, comments, uh, leave them below if you've got any questions or suggestions. And I'll see you guys in the next video.